welcome to my channel and thank you for your all the support so today i am coming up with a new series that is on a automobile interview questions so as you know that i have the 20 years of experience in automobile industry and i will tell you that how you can crack those interview uh, in a perspective of technical round because as you know that uh, i'm not good in my communication you know i have the below average communication but still i manage to clear around 10 to 12 interviews in automotive uh, around five to six was oem and five to six was service-based companies so i will tell you how to approach to the interview and mainly on the technical side for the hr side if you want uh, like that even how i uh, able to clear uh, you know the hr round even having the below average communication skills so definitely i will tell you some tricks how you can clear but uh, if you want then you just comment uh, in the comment section so i will let you know that uh, how uh, i have faced and how i prepared for the uh, interview uh, related to the hr okay so uh, for this series as you know this is new series and uh, definitely those who are associated with the channel they, those uh, they are either preparing for the interviews or second thing uh, they are in the automotive field already and preparing for some other interviews or they are just trying to gain the knowledge on this channel so that's why i thought to make this type of series so that it can help you uh, but i just uh, have one request that if you like this particular series and you want to continue me uh, to make this particular type of series then please like comment and i am uh, thinking if it will be like 50 comments and 100 like on this video then i will continue this particular series and i will come up with a at least 10 to 12 uh, interview experience which i have faced and what type of question has been asked for the product development and wiring harness so i have attended both type of uh, interviews and i have worked with the product development as well as wiring harness so i'm looking uh, you know forward for, with this series and let's see how the response comes so the uh, I'll just come up with uh, today with uh, my interview experience with the Tata Motors that how I have faced and what are the rounds they have in the uh, initial phases. So they generally uh, hire on a senior manager post, senior manager post on experience if you are going on experience. So they will hire on this post senior manager, then they have the DGM and then you have the GM. So generally they hire on the, this particular you know category. If you have the 10 to 12 years of experience, still they will hire on this senior manager. Uh, if you have 15 to 20 years of experience, then they will hire on a DGM level as well. So that is very DGM level, that is very limited as you know, these posts and vacancies are very limited. So most of the vacancies are come for the senior manager. So there are total four rounds in the Tata Motors. The first round would be the HR screening. Then second round would be the technical round. And then third round would be technical round plus management. And this round the, here, your DGM uh, plus uh, GM would be there. So they will ask you the question related to the technical as well as managerial also. And the fourth round is the HR round. So mostly if I talk about the Indian OEMs, this uh, fourth round is just a formality. If you are cleared with these three rounds, then you are good to go with the HR round. So I will not talk about much about these two rounds because you already know that there are some basic questions which which is asked in the interview. So first round in HR screening, they will ask about um, what type of experience you have, how many years of experience, what is your expected salary, do you have any uh, you know gap in the education uh, or the uh, experience as well. If you have any uh, you know gap in the experience also suppose you have worked for four years and then after that you take the break for two years and then you have jo again joined the industry so those things you have to disclose in the hr screening the hr will ask this basic question after that the second round will come technical and technical plus management the third one so i will discuss about these two rounds so what type of questions are asked in these uh, in these two interview and uh, in, uh, round and that the fourth round is the hr round so i will not talk about the what is your strength what is your weakness but still i will say that there are some tricks that how you can you know make the good impact even you have the below average communication skills as you know and you can see in my all the videos i have the below average communication skills but still i was able to crack almost 12 to 13 companies uh, 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 either oem or uh, service based so we will move to the uh, my interview experience with the uh, technical what type of question they have asked in technical and that position was for senior manager product development in a starting and charging system so 
there would be few question on starting and charging system and wiring harness as well so here we go so my interview with ex, uh, you know experience with tml so the first question they will ask so uh, i will not go with a like uh, tell me about yourself so those are the basic question and you can uh, you know handle all those questions that is not a big deal but here i will tell you the five questions which i remember uh, right now uh, which they have asked and these question you will not get in any book or something okay so these are the practical questions which they have asked so first question was when positive and negative terminal of the battery so suppose this is my battery and this is my ba uh, positive terminal here and this is my negative terminal so what he is asking that when positive and negative terminal of battery are in touch with tightener so tightener means uh, that uh, which is used for tighten the uh, you know nut or something we call a wrench or uh, you know chabi uh, pona i think in hindi so uh, they they what they are trying to say here if your tightener touch from positive to negative then why does battery arcs so why the you know uh, you will get the arcing Uh, when you touch through the tightener okay this positive and negative okay this is not the question this you know why it happens okay you know this question but the twist is here that however there is no arcing when touching the positive and negative wires in the wiring harness so suppose here you will get the arcing and you know why, why what is the reason the arcing we are getting okay but when you are having your wiring harness from power distribution box and then you have the negative terminal then this wire is going there and this wire is touched somewhere here in the you know door or somewhere it is in the rear side of tail lamp okay then there is no arcing or something the only uh, either uh, your wire will little bit burn or the fuse will uh, burn out okay this is happening right but what is the reason that even if you take this wire to here and this wire to here without fuse also still there would be no arcing only there would be some burn only there would be not that much arcing which you, you know will happen when you are touching this battery positive to negative through the tightener so there is a one you know answer of this question and i want to see the technical answer so here you can just tell that this is the reason that the current due to current okay but i want more detailed you know answer in this ki what is the exact reason and how we are not getting any arcing in the uh, wiring harness when wiring harness touch so this was the first question so all these five questions i am just uh, you know explaining the hint i am giving some hint and explaining the question what you have to do you have to just give the comment section in comment what is your answer or for all the five questions okay so if i get at least 50 comments for these uh, questions so definitely i will come up with the answers and you will just check your answer what is the your technical answer okay Uh, and what is the detailed answer of these questions second question they have asked what does the alternator do in a car okay so what does it mean that what is the function of the alternator in a car first question what will occur if alternator fails okay so uh, suppose there is a situation your car is moving and alternator got failed okay so will your car will stop what will happen can you operate the vehicle vehicle with the alternator off okay suppose uh, your uh, car is does not have the alternator okay will you able to operate the uh, your car or vehicle or suppose your alternator is okay when you have started your car but you have traveled around 500 km and your alternator fails so will your car will still working uh, will uh, still be in a driving mode or what will happen what will happen suppose after 500 km of driving your alternator fails then your car will still be in the driving mode or it will stop or what will happen okay and what is the effect if uh, if i say in one word what will what would be the effect if alternator fails after this much of uh, you know journey then third question was what kind of fuse do we use in a car okay so this is very simple question and i have explained in one of my series that what kind of fuse we use in the car but still i am surprised that i have made the three videos uh, on the fuses from the basic to the advanced uh, what type of fuse we have in the automotives and how we use slow blow fuse fast blow fuse where they we they will be used but the people have seen one first video around 200 views but on second video it is 30 views 
and surprisingly in third video it is 300 so suppose 200 people are seeing here they are not seeing the second but if you are not seeing the second and you are watching the third one that will not make any sense because you will lose some information in the second video and it will not make sense anything so if you know the answer of or you don't know the answer of you just go through once that what kind of fuses we do we use in the car so in this they will give you the situation they will say that um, uh, there is a starting system okay or there is a door okay or there is a uh, condition where you have the inductive load so what type of fuse you will use there okay this is i have made just simple and then second they are asking what are the primary and secondary fuses in the automobile so there are some primary fuses and secondary fuses okay uh, in power distribution so what are those and how why we use the primary and secondary fuses in the automobile Okay, this was the third question. Then fourth question was, does the charging system employ the fuses? So what does it mean? Uh, that uh, does the charging system? Uh, what they are saying? Uh, what they are trying to say? The charging system you have in charging system what you have alternator. Okay. So what they are trying to say? Whether alternator use the fuse or not? Okay. Do we require the fuses for alternator or not? If yes. If so, what kind of fuse you are we are using? Okay, so in this mega fuse are you using maxi fuse? Are you using okay mini fuse you are using? So this will come only when you know the charging system. Okay, Ki what type of current they uh, in charging system or alternator uh, flowing through the wire? Then only you can come to know. Okay, this type of fuse we are going to use for the um, charging system. So I hope this one is also clear. What I am trying to say here. Then fifth question is. What is the rating of the car's alternator? So alternator which is used for the charging system. So for this one um, alternator, okay. So alternator provides the uh, you know sorry uh, provides the uh, power to the battery plus accessory. Okay. So you have to do the charge balancing for this. Decide the uh, alternate to decide the alternate uh, alternator uh, rating. You have to do the charge balancing. Charge balancing one second for the alternator and for defining the alternate rate uh, alternator rating. What you have to do first, you have to calculate all the loads. Okay, once you calculate the loads, then you define the charger rating. Okay, uh, charging system rating or alternator rating. Okay. So, you, we have to ask here the counter question that what type of load, but they will understand. Suppose you say that 40 amps or 55 amps, okay, alternator is required. So, they, they then they will ask that how you have taken this particular value and what is your calculation behind this or you say 125 amps of alternator is required, then they, okay, then they will ask that what are the, um, you know parameters you have taken to define this particular uh, value okay so you just go through all these five questions and give your answer in the comment box if i will get at least 50 answer for these uh, these questions so i will come up with a next video with explaining in a detail for all the five questions and you will get more things in this so in this i will explain you what is the rating for cars alternator it is all depend on charge balancing so I will tell you what type of loads you have, intermediate, uh, intermediate uh, loads, uh, continuous load or uh, prolonged loads and then how we uh, you know, calculate that charge balancing and define the alternator rating. So I hope uh, uh, I have cleared all the questions uh, uh, with the, some hint. Okay, you just comment below with your probable answers and uh, I will be happy if it helped you. So thank you. Thank you very much.